precisely 6.45. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. News edited by Danushka Madhavala and read by Sharifa Tahir. Headlines President to address the nation today. Efforts underway to integrate economic and technical sectors through IT and computer technology. The World Bank approves 150 million US dollars for health sector in Sri Lanka. Pirivan education to be digitized. Plant quarantine service at Colombo Seaport is being expanded with new technology. Cabinet approval granted for debt restructuring agreements with Paris Club and other stakeholders. Foreign news, Julian Assange arrives on U.S. Pacific Island ahead of plea deal. In sports, man who helped revolutionize rain heat cricket dies aged 84. Local news in detail now. President Ranul Ekramasinghe is scheduled to address the nation today. The Department of Government Information stated that a special statement is to be made by the President at 8 p.m. The address will be telecast live through all government media channels. President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized that the government is placing special focus on integrating economic and technical sectors through advancements in computer and information technology. The president highlighted the vision to transform Colombo Port City into a financial zone facilitating offshore activities and attracting investments in Sri Lanka with a strong emphasis on the development of enterprises and the utilization of digital technology by both local and foreign investors. President Vikramasinghe made these remarks during the opening of the 2024 DGCon Global Investment Conference, which commenced yesterday at the Cinnamon Grand Hotel, Colombo. The conference, themed Harnessing Sri Lanka's Untapped Potential, aims to showcase the country's investment opportunities. Following the opening session, a panel discussion took place featuring the participation of Chief of Presidential Staff Senior Advisor to the President on National Security, Sagala Ratnaika, Minister of State for Technology, Kanaka Herat, and Minister of State for Investment Promotion, Dilum Amunukama. Additionally, President Vikramasinghe met with the Global CEO of IFS, Mr. Mark Moffat, in conjunction with the conference. The Korean government and the Korea International Cooperation Agency have started an agreement to support the program of modernization of the plant quarantine service at the seaport of Colombo. Accordingly, the plant quarantine service at Colombo Seaport has been expanded. The new plant quarantine service building, built at a cost of $1.3 million, was declared open at the Colombo Seaport premises yesterday. Ministers Mahinda Maravira and Nimal Siripala de Silva attended the event. The representatives from the Korean government, Korean Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ms. Myon Lee, Vice President of Koika, Mr. Lee Yun Yong, and Country Director of Koika, Ms. Kim Myunjin also participated in the event. Finance State Minister Shehan Sema Singh said the World Bank has approved 150 million US dollars to improve health facilities in the country. Sema Singh added that the World Bank has approved a financial facility of 150 million US dollars to improve the quality of health services of the country. He commented that this move shows the government's commitment to strengthen the country's health care infrastructure by ensuring better health care for all citizens. Director for Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka of the World Bank, Faris Haddad Zervos, said that Sri Lanka's health sector has shown remarkable performance and that the necessary strength will be utilized to strengthen health systems to meet the growing health care needs of the elderly persons in Sri Lanka, a country with an aging population in South Asia, as well as effectively control non-communicable diseases, which accounts for 80% of deaths in Sri Lanka. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation giving you the news. Continuing with more stories here at home. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dr. Bandalukunavardhana said that the government will implement a program to introduce digital technology to the Pirivena education system. Accordingly, steps will be taken to provide smart classrooms, including at least two computers, a smart board and a printer for the 825 Pirivanas in the country. 
Speaking at the weekly cabinet press briefing at the information department, Minister Dr. Gunawardena said the cabinet and ministers approved the joint proposal presented by President Ranil Vikramasinghe in his capacity as Technology Minister and Education Minister Sushil Prema Jansa to implement the proposed program. He said that over 100,000 monks and lay students are studying in Piravanas around the country and this project will help these students to utilize digital technology to conduct research and analysis on Buddhist heritage in the country. Cabinet spokesperson Minister Dr. Bandulukunavardhana said cabinet approval has been granted for signing of debt restructuring agreements with Paris Club and other stakeholders. Speaking during the cabinet press briefing held yesterday, Minister Gunavardhana said the relevant agreements will be signed today. A Sri Lankan delegation comprising of the Secretary of the Finance Ministry, State Ministers and other relevant officials have left for France for the discussions with the Paris Club group of major creditor countries. Furthermore, the minister stated that the president assured that detailed information regarding all the agreements being signed in this manner will be submitted to the parliament. That's local news for the moment. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Paveda Mahatma. Speaker Mahinda Yapa has notified all members of parliament in writing to attend a special parliamentary sitting on the 2nd of July 2024 at 9.30 a.m. The special parliamentary sitting has been called in pursuance of Standing Order No. 16 of the Standing Orders of the Parliament on the request made by the Prime Minister. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. And on watch slide, the UNDP Sri Lanka recently launched the 2023-2024 Global Human Development Report themed Breaking the Gridlock, Reimaging Cooperation in a Polarized World. The report highlights the urgent need to address uneven development, rising inequality and political polarization. It underscores the importance of building a 21st century architecture for global public goods, dialing down temperatures and pushing back polarization and narrowing agency gaps to address the contemporary development challenges and to accelerate progress on human development and sustainable development. Coming up, World News. World News Headlines Julian Assange arrives on U.S. Pacific Island ahead of plea deal. Five killed in Parliament ablaze in Kenya tax protests. China's space probe returns with rare moon rocks. World News in Detail WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is due to appear in a U.S. court on Wednesday where he will formalize a plea deal and leave a free man following a 14-year legal battle. He arrived in the northern Mariana Islands on American territory in the Pacific on Wednesday morning local time. On Tuesday, he left a British prison and flew to the Thai capital Bangkok for refueling. U.S. officials were pursuing Mr. Assange, 52, over charges related to a huge disclosure of secret files in 2010, which they said put lives in danger. Reacting to the deal, which will see Mr. Assange plead guilty to one charge, his wife Stella told she was elated. As part of his lengthy legal marathon, Mr. Assange has spent the last five years behind bars in the U.K., resisting American attempts to extradite him. He also faced separate charges of rape and sexual assault in Sweden, which he denied. He spent seven years hiding in Ecuador's London embassy, claiming the Swedish case would lead him to be sent to the U.S. At least five protesters have been shot dead by police in Kenya and a section of parliament has gone up in flames as demonstrations against new tax proposals escalate. An angry crowd broke through police lines to storm parliament in the capital Nairobi before setting parts of it ablaze.
In an address on Tuesday evening, President William Ruto said all means would be deployed to thwart any attempts by dangerous criminals to undermine the security and stability of our country. He has deployed the military to quell the protests. Protests against an unpopular finance bill, which includes several tax rises, have been ongoing for days. Finally, on world news, China's lunar probe has returned to Earth with the first ever samples of the moon's unexplored far side. The Change 6 landed in the Inner Mongolia desert on Tuesday after a nearly two-month-long mission which was fraught with risks. Scientists are eagerly awaiting the Chang'e 6 as the samples could answer key questions about how planets are formed. China is the only country to have landed on the far side of the moon, having done so before in 2019. The far side, which faces away from Earth, is technically challenging to reach due to its distance and its difficult terrain of giant craters and few flat surfaces. Scientists are interested in this less explored site as it is hoped it may contain traces of ice which can be harvested for water, oxygen and hydrogen. Development News And on development news, the government has announced plans to develop Hingurakkoda Airport to meet international civil aviation standards based on the expert committee recommendations. The joint proposal to this effect, presented by President Ranil Vikramasinghe in his capacity as Defence Minister and the Port Shipping and Aviation Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva, was approved by the Cabinet of Ministers at its meeting on Monday. Currently managed by the Sri Lanka Air Force, the airport's transformation is part of a strategic initiative to boost the country's aviation infrastructure. That's on Development News. Moving on with sports news. On cricket, Frank Duckworth, the man whose mathematical knowledge helped to revolutionize rain affected cricket, has died aged 84. The Lytham born statistician created the Duckworth Lewis method, a model to recalculate scores when limited over matches were curtailed by weather conditions with fellow Lancastrian Tony Lewis. Announcing Duckworth's death, fellow statistician Rob Easterway said he had been a very genial man who was proud of the method despite it leaving casual fans somewhat flummoxed. And in soccer, Denmark finished second in Group C at the European Championship by virtue of having a better disciplinary record than Slovenia of the dull draw with Serbia. Neither side produced a performance that reflected their potential, but Denmark were the better team in a forgettable encounter in Munich. Denmark ended on an identical record to Slovenia, meaning they had to be separated by the amount of yellow cards they received. That's on Sports News. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, then the Puina, have a carana. Youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The all new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Software giant IFS yesterday announced that it is set to launch a new venture in Colombo Port City, a move expected to create additional 1,000 new employment opportunities. IFS CEO Mark Moffat made the announcement delivering the keynote address at the DigiCon Global Investment Summit 2024 underscoring the company's long-term commitment to Sri Lanka's economic development. IFS CEO underscored the significant contributions of Sri Lanka to the global success of the enterprise application software company. Despite its Swedish origins, IFS has cultivated a robust and impactful presence in Sri Lanka over the past 25 years. That's on Business News. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, then the Puina, have a carana. Youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The 
own new NSP Ithrumitra account. NSP I am a plan for your dream. And on economic news, the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce officially launched the Spark Youth Entrepreneurship Competition 2024, setting the stage for aspiring young entrepreneurs across the country to pitch their innovative business ideas. Building on the success of its inaugural edition in 2023, Spark 2024 continues to foster an entrepreneurial spirit among the country's youth, empowering youth ages 15 to 30 with the skills and resources to drive innovation solutions to society vital change challenges that's on economic news weather report and on the weather update, showers will occur at times in western Sabragamo and northwestern provinces and in Kandy, Aurelia, Gaul and Matra districts. Fairly heavy showers, about 50 mm, are likely at some places in Sabragamo province and in Kurunagala, Kandy and Aurelia districts. Several spells of showers may occur in Matale and Hambantara districts. Strong winds of about 40 to 50 km per hour can be expected at times over the western slopes of the central hills, northern north central and northwestern provinces, and in Trinkamali, Hambantota, and Munaragala districts. That's the weather update. Before we wind up the bulletin of news, back to the headlines. President to address the nation today. Efforts underway to integrate economic and technical sectors through IT and computer technology. The World Bank approves 150 million US dollars for health sector in Sri Lanka. Pirivan education to be digitized. Plant quarantine service at Colombo Seaport is being expanded with new technology. Cabinet approval granted for debt restructuring agreements with Paris Club and other stakeholders. Foreign news Julian Assange arrives on US Pacific Island ahead of plea deal. In sports, man who helped revolutionize rain hit cricket dies aged 84. With that, we conclude the morning bulletin of news and it's back to Anupama to give you some good company this morning. <laughs> 